Okay, in this next section, we're gonna start doing some polygon modeling. And I'm gonna go through how I started with this cube and ended with this six pack case. In not very many steps, really. So to start off, I'm gonna delete this uh, six pack case and start with the cube. First thing, what I wanna do really is just make this the footprint of the six pack case. So this is where everything's going to start from the very bottom of the six pack case with this cube. And what I'm going to do is see right here in these attributes, you have the size in X, Y, and Z direction. You also have the segments in X, Y, and Z directions. And by default, they're set to one each. Now, if I increase the X, segments you can see that there's two one and two segments and if I just keep increasing you can see how that lays out but I actually only want two segments this is going to be the kind of spine of the six pack case and the three bottles are going to go on each side so that part's nice I need to increase the segments in the Z direction so I can have a six pack case and that's pretty good like you want to have make sure that these are pretty solid squares and they look like they are maybe just a little bit of tweaking and that seems to be a pretty good footprint for the uh, six pack case. I think it's a little bit skinnier on the top. And this is the size in the y direction, so I'm actually just going to make that 0.5 inches, which is way too much. Let's do 0.05 actually. And I want to make sure I point out before I get too deep into this. Uh, these these are real numbers. This is you know it's important to keep these in in mind of of real world scale because that is how it is set up in cinema. So right now I'm not too concerned about actual thicknesses and actual distances and inches right now uh, in cinema. What I what I'm looking for right now is just the proportion of things. And what I'm going to do is make this editable so I can start using some polygon modeling tools on it. And what the difference, what that means is right now, editable polygon objects, uh, that makes you able to use uh, point line and polygon modes and all the tools related to each of those modes when a polygon object is made editable. But you also lose a couple things too when you do that because right now, these uh, objects are considered parametric, as in they have parameters that they can be that can be changed. Um, and specifically for a cube object, you know things like the size and x, y, and z direction can be typed in. The amount of segments can be changed. You can have uh, fillet surfaces, as in like a like a bevel. I'll show you what that looks like. You can have that. You can just select those things. So those things are available to you when they're a parametric object. They disappear when they become an editable polygon object. So just make sure you know the differences between parametric and polygon objects. And also at the same time, this icon goes away, showing that it's a parametric object. So when I hit the letter C, look at this icon. It becomes this triangle point, and these par parameters disappear. They become a polygon object. So I can't, I can no longer change the amount of segments or anything. But now I can use these different modes to edit this object, which is what I want to be doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to bring up, I want to expand vertically this footprint 
and, and make these actual uh, areas that can hold a bottle. And what I'm going to do is just hold down shift and select these six faces. Now we're in polygon mode. What's interesting is in each mode there are unique tools and, and uh, options for each mode. And you can find the differences when you right click on a selection in either mode. So if I right click right now, these are all the options available to me in polygon mode. All the really easy to access quick tools in polygon mode. If I change modes to line mode, and you can see how the selections now go to this, I right click, the amount of tools has changed and the type of tools as well has changed in line mode. Same with point mode. And these are the points in point mode for a polygon object. If I right click, there's also these types of tools in point mode. So just be aware that there are different tools for different modes. Um, one of the best tools that you'll use a lot in polygon editing is the extrude tool. There's also another one next to it. If I right click, you have extrude right here and you have extrude inner. Now what extrude inner does, if I select that and I have the selection made and I just click and drag, you can see it makes a polygon, so it makes new polygons inside the current selection. Now if I did extrude as opposed to extrude inner right now and I just click and drag, it extrudes that way. And I can also extrude downwards too if I if I wanted to. That would be I'm right now I'm I'm swiping left as I'm doing that and I'm swiping right to come vert to come vertically upwards. So that's what extrude and extrude inner do. Um, there's also a setting in extrude inner, if I go back to it. This is checked by default, preserve groups. And what that does is when I click and drag, even though I have multiple polygons selected, it's going to treat that as a group of polygons and extrude inner from that selection. So if I uncheck preserve groups and click and drag, it makes individual extrudes from each polygon selection, which is what I want. Because what I want to do is create some walls, some cardboard walls for the uh, six pack case. So I actually don't want these selections to be extruded upwards, I want everything else to be extruded upwards around it. So what I'm going to do to get that is I'm going to select like this. Basically, kind of messily selecting everything on the top of this six pack case. And I'm holding down shift while I'm selecting. So I have everything selected now. And the easy part is I can just hold down command or control on Windows and deselect these major faces. So now I have this kind of outer border selection. And that's what I'm going to be extruding to make this six pack case. So if I right click, go to extrude, and then click and drag, there we go. Here is the first part of your six pack case. Now I can go from there and what I'm going to do is go to the Live Selection tool, hold down Command, and deselect these outer edges of the six pack case. And I'm going to extrude this right here. Oops. And make that the handle. Now it's very rough obviously right now, but here we are in six or seven steps. We've gone from a cube to the rough shape of a six pack case. And in the next section, we're going to refine this case with another couple uh, tools I like to use. You'll use a lot in polygon modeling.